God bless you, everyone. Hi, good everybody. morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Grace Christian Church Facebook Live Sunday morning. <laughs> Praise God. It's a beautiful day outside. We've gotten a wonderful <laughs> night of rain. I think it rain. rained all night. Just a good soaking rain, and it was such a blessing, such a blessing to see yes. that rain come down, hear it rattling on the roof throughout yeah. the night. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful morning this morning. A yes. little cool out, a little mm -hmm. breezy, but this is the day that the Lord, Lord has, has made, made, and we will rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in, in it. Yes, Amen. Good morning, PJ. Good you look morning. like a million bucks today. <laughs> Praise God. Roll Good out of morning, bed everybody. looking fabulous. I wish I could do that, but I want you to know it takes some time to get Pastor G looking this good. How do you like his haircut? I this like it. I like one. it. I like Doing it. Okay. I've had two COVID cuts, <laughs> and uh, that uh, sunlight coming in over here makes that hair look a little bit darker. See that right there? When I block that out, it looks nicer. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. We love you today. If you would, reach over and click like and share and invite somebody to join with you this morning. Praise God. It's going to be a we, good message. It's going like to be it. a great service today. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you have clicked on to the uh, links that PJ had there for you this morning. The beautiful, beautiful song about I will sing of the goodness of God. So good. I will sing of the goodness of God. And we ask you to do that so that you can prepare the atmosphere of your home as the sanctuary of God. Important. Praise God. Well, as you're logging in this morning, would you just let us know from where you're watching? I see California's on. I see Albert <laughs> Lee is on. I see Stillwater, Minnesota is on. God bless you. You know, people, PJ, watch from all around I the world. Know, it's so awesome. These broadcasts right here coming to them from our virtual sanctuary. <laughs> Praise God. So good to see you this morning. You're looking beautiful this morning, bright eyed and bushy tail. <laughs> Praise God. PJ, would you lead us in a word of prayer this morning? Just bless the Lord and bless the sure, people today. Let's pray. Lord, Hallelujah. we bless you today. Yes, we thank we thank you for this day of life. We thank you for this breath in our lungs. We thank you for eyes that can see, ears that can hear, and a mouth that can sing your praises. And we thank you for Hallelujah. the liberty that we have to do so in this country. Lord, prepare our hearts today. Prepare Lord. our hearts, you Lord. You are so good to us, Lord. Prepare our hearts with Amen. your goodness to receive your word. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Would you just click right over right over there in the right hand corner, I think it is, and press share, press share. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making Salvation 
Amen. 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 Would you clap your hands into the Lord and just give a shout of praise unto God this morning? God is good. I love you, Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. In all of the heavens, in all of the earth, there is no one like unto our God. Hallelujah. Praise God. No one like unto our God. And no one that is worthy to be praised like our God. Amen. 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 When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, Turn me around, set my feet on solid ground. I just came to tell you what the good Lord's done for me. Oh, I just came to tell you what the good Lord's done for me. I just came to tell you how the good Lord set me free. Well, he picked me up, turned me around, set my feet on solid ground. I just came to tell you what the good Lord's done for me. And he's done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's a good place to type amen Amen. right there. God has done so much for us that we cannot tell it all. This is going to be an interactive service today. So we call you to wake up. (laughs) We call you to worship the Lord right now, right in this virtual sanctuary. Amen. That's a good place to type amen. Amen. Go ahead. Go to your keyboard and type (laughs) amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some shout of praise (laughs) unto God. Amen. I am feeling the presence of the Lord right here yes. in our home Amen. already. Yes, my mouth hurts from smiling. Praise again. God. <laughs> That's so good to be with you all. It is. It really oh, is. My goodness. And we're going to have a tremendous service mm-hmm. in the Lord this morning. I can guarantee you <clears throat> that we're going to have a great service. You know, PJ, Guaranteed. there was a little country church, Guaranteed. I mean, way out in the country. In Indiana? And no, I'm not sure where it was, sweetheart, but <laughs> the story is told that there was just a country church and the pastor and his son would walk to church together every Sunday morning okay. and then and then the mom would bring the the daughters and the little brother to church and but the the son would always accompany his dad on that walk to church one day uh, every Sunday. And so the pastor came in and the offering box was in the back of the church, like in the lobby or the narthex of the church. It's a beautiful little white church with the tall steeple like and the, the cemetery. Exactly oh, like so the beautiful. one Postcard. we drove by yesterday. Yes. That is the Lesur River 
Lutheran Church, yeah, pastored by so Pastor Stephen Woyan. So anyhow, the son came in with his dad. His dad was the parson. And so his dad got up and he led the singing with the old time hymnals. And you could hear the creak of the floor. You could hear the creak of the pews. And the pastor preached and then he encouraged the people to give their offering, bring their offering on the way out of the service. And so the pastor on his way out, you know how it goes, PJ. You know it, it, goes. it really doesn't matter whether the church is a mega church or a little church. It always seems like the pastor and their family are closing up, turning the lights <laughs> up, locking the doors. And here it was. The pastor went to the back of the church and he opened up that little offering box. And But on the here's one thing I forgot to tell you. On the way in, the pastor reached into the coat of his pocket and he took a 50 cent piece. Now, a lot of you young people don't know what a 50 cent 50 piece cent is, piece. but they took a he took a 50 cent piece and he dropped it in the offering box. And then after the service they were leaving, and the little boy is watching his dad and his dad opened up the lid on the offering box, reached in there and there was that lone 50 cent piece <laughs> in that offering box. Uh. And the little boy looked up at his dad cuz he could just see sadness on his dad's face and he looked at his dad and he said well you know dad if you had put more in you would have gotten more out <laughs> and i gotta tell you this morning the more that you put into your worship experience i can guarantee you the more you'll get out of your worship yes, experience. All right. If you come in and That's you're true. just kind of giving it half-hearted and, oh, my dad and mom made me get out mm -hmm. of bed or my spouse reminded me that it's Sunday morning, it's yes. the Lord's day, and we just got to drag in here and do our duty, then you're not going to get much out of it. We but are if the king today. Amen. amen. But yes. if you will put your whole soul. heart and yes, soul yes, into yes. it, I'm telling you, you'll get a whole lot always. out of it. Yeah. That's a good place to clap your hands. Amen. That's a good place to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's a good place to type amen. 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 Because you know what? When I think of the goodness of Jesus oh. and all he has oh, done for me, you, I can't help but shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God for saving, saving me. me. Praise about. God. And again, I'm going to cue you. That's a good place <laughs> to type amen. amen. All right. Now give us some heart bombs over there and some <laughs> thumbs up because we are in the house of the Lord this morning. Our homes are the place where God meets us yes. in this hour. Yes. High five, PJ. Praise God. <laughs> Will you greet these one these wonderful people today? We are so glad that you could be with us Hallelujah. today, everybody. We're just so glad that you're taking a, a few minutes out of your day to worship the King with us. And we know some of you are having a great day. Some aren't feeling so good. Deborah was just saying that she had to put her dog to sleep and mm. is feeling really tough. We know what that's like. And and we know people are hurting today. So, so sorry about wherever that. Wherever you are today in your life, know that we're with you and that Hallelujah. the Lord will bring you healing. He will. And strength he and will. peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good all the time and all, all the time. The time God, God is, is good. good. I, I was reading an article last night just as I was preparing my heart to go to bed and just think mm -hmm. about the Lord. Yeah. And uh, it, the writer asked the question, is God really good all the time? Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, PJ, I answered the question right off the bat. Of course he is. Of course he yes, is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God all is the good yes. all the time. Yes. It really doesn't matter what we're going through, whether we're mm -hmm. on the mountaintop or in the valley God is good and he all the uses time. It for the good. He yes. does, absolutely. All of, it, all of it. God bless you, Evangelist David Taylor, mighty man of God. <laughs> mighty man of God. God bless you. Wherever you're at today, mm -hmm. we pray God's blessings on you, Amen. man of God. I remember ministering when they came to our church in Lafayette, Indiana, and he did magic shows for the uh, kids, and we yes. got hundreds of kids out to the house so of the fun. Lord that impactful. day. and so yeah, Oh, very impactful. He's a powerful preacher, just a firebrand for Amen. the Lord. Praise God. Well, we welcome you 
to Grace Christian Church this morning. We have put the links on the uh, Grace Christian Church and SoCal Connect page. So hopefully you have opened up your home and played those links. And this morning, PJ, one of those songs that you chose was, I will sing of the goodness uh, of God. I will sing of the goodness of love God. So we're going to ask you to dial in very closely this morning. We're going to ask you in honor unto the Lord, in honor of each other as the body of Christ, and in honor of your shepherds today, feeding you the word of the Lord, that you do no multitasking during this service today. We want you to lean in closely. In. Uh, there are coloring sheets for the kids. And adults. And adults, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Especially if you deal with uh, attention deficit disorder, coloring or doodling during the preaching, just zeroing in like mm -hmm. that. It just helps you process and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing Praise wrong at God. All. And you'll need a pen and paper for later on. Yes. Amen. One. So, PJ, would you now lead us in the worship time of this service in giving unto the Lord today? Yes. We give to the Lord with cheerful hearts. And in the heading of this video are some easy giving options. You can text to the number 77977. Connect. Text this word all together in one word, CONNECT NUMBER TWO GRACE, all in caps. CONNECT NUMBER TWO GRACE to 77977. Or visit the push pay uh, link that's up there. Or use good old snail mail and send to GCC PO Box 1, <laughs> Albert Lee, Minnesota, Amen. 56007. Praise God. So if you would now go to your phones, go to your tablets, and you can log on to that. And you can bring the Lord's tithes and his offerings. If you're more comfortable with snail mail, P.O. Box mm -hmm. 1, <laughs> Albert Lee, Minnesota. Yeah. It's been amazing how faith the members Praise of Grace God Christian Church. Saints. Man, I got the hiccups you got again. Hiccups. Of Grace Christian Church in SoCal Connect. And our friends from around the yes. world that have brought their offerings and the Lord's tithes yes. right here through the Amen. vehicle of Grace Christian church. Some some have even brought them to our home and they yeah. said this is the way we feel most comfortable. Whatever is the most comfortable f way for you to bring the Lord's tithe, that's the first 10% of all of your living. Mm -hmm. And you might say, Pastor G, PG, I can't afford to do that in this down economy. I'm telling you, you can't afford not to. Right. The windows of heaven are open. God yes. has given us a green light and it is a wonderful time to be alive. I now think it's the, the greatest hour of the church. Yes. So if you would now just take a couple of moments and go ahead and let's worship the Lord mm -hmm. with our giving. Yes. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. PJ, do you have any announcements for us during this well, time? Well, um, yes. Excitingly, next. So mm. many of you know that during the summer we already do church without walls we go to Morin Park which is near our church building yep and we have church without walls all summer long um, right on Main permitted. Street in Albert Lee Main and College yep and so we are Main and Euclid Main and Euclid yep. thank you for that <laughs> yeah you'd be going forever if you're trying to hit Main and College Main and Euclid so starting next Sunday weather permitting and we'll go right at the same time so this will be our plan here in Minnesota we're allowed groups of 10, ten. people max. So here's and we're two, two of the 10. <laughs> so, so what we'll do is this. I'll make a Facebook event and I'll have eight seats available. So go ahead and sign in uh, for yourself or your family, whoever. When the seats are full, we'll just go with those eight next Sunday, 1030. So same time. But we'll also be here on Facebook Live. So same time. Uh, next Sunday, every Sunday will be 1030 Facebook Live, whether we're in the park, whether we're in the home, if it's not good weather. And we'll just go with how they allow us to have our numbers. And, you know, if you like to, you may also drive up in your car, remain in your car 10 feet apart from each other and go ahead and listen on on your phone on Facebook Live. You can and then you don't have to be part of the eight. So um, 10 of us can be there. Social distancing, of course. And then if you would like bring to... Bring your own chair. Bring your own chair. <laughs> yeah. Bring everything you need. We're just going to come into the park, go back out of the park. And um, I'm looking forward to that. 
And then we're working on some other plans where we'll also be offering back-to-back -back services. So we may do one at 10, one at 10.30, but we would only video uh, Facebook Live, the 10.30 service. And so we're trying to accommodate, accommodate this, and then we're also looking at doing some Sunday evening services at our home, fireside services. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful backyard. We have a beautiful fire ring. We'll have a fire going. And so these are the plans yes. that we are rolling out, that we've been processing and working. Again, bring your own chair. In Again, and out. bring your that own chair. We'll That's good. right. That's right. And so PJ will be putting that on our Facebook page. There will be an event there, the first eight to, to sign up, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll, we will be meeting again together. Praise God. Yeah. Give the Lord a round of applause right now, would you? Oh, Amen. You, All right, so a few years ago, um, I, in fact, I was 18 years old, <laughs> so it was a few years a ago, few. and we had taken a trip to Mexico, from San Diego to Mexico, and we were gone about, I think, about two weeks and on the way home, we were driving through the Arizona desert. And it was my shift at night from like um, midnight to 8 in the morning. I, I can't remember what the shift was. But somewhere around 4 o'clock in the morning, the Lord gave me a song. And as I was driving, I was singing this song just as if I had known it my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I was driving the van. We didn't have any air conditioning in the van. Everybody was asleep. My dad was riding shotgun. He was asleep. Other family members were in the back of the van. I think we had put a full-size mattress back there, and we were getting low on gas. So I woke my dad up about 5 o'clock in the morning. I said, Dad, we're getting low on gas. We probably need to stop. And, and you know, in those days, there were not as many truck stops and mm -hmm. convenience stores and so you really needed to plan wisely and so we pulled over and with just a tiny little country gas station and convenience store way out in the middle of nowhere in Mexico? no in Arizona. Oh, in Arizona and there was a couple of rocks there and I pulled my guitar out and I sang this song for my dad and so you know the store was supposed to open up about six in the morning Six o'clock came, nobody was there. Seven o'clock came, nobody was there. And there oh, was a no. number on there and a payphone. Mm -hmm. So we called that number. And the man on the other line said, I'm also the mayor of the town. <laughs> so I've had some emergencies I've had to deal with. I'll be there in about an hour and a half. So we didn't dare leave because we needed gas. Mm -hmm. And you didn't want to get caught mm -hmm. out in that Arizona heat. Yeah. So for about two and a half hours, believe it or not, my dad had me singing this song over and over <laughs> and over. And my dad would just raise his hands and he would worship the Lord. And he would say, son, that's a song from the Lord. I love this song. Well, anyhow, we got our gas. Finally, we got some bread and some bologna and stuff like that. And we got on the road. And when we got back on the interstate, there was a terrible accident there were five people sleeping in a vehicle on the side of the on the side of the interstate and a semi truck driver that was hauling cattle had been driving and he fell asleep and he swerved and he wiped out that vehicle the driver of the semi truck all of the five people in the vehicle were killed cattle were strewn all over the freeway and it was that day that i really felt the lord impress upon me that God is in the delays. God is yeah. in the delays. We may not be happy about the delays that we see in our life. We may True. grow impatient. Oh, yes. We may grow frustrated. Yes. But I want you to know this as a believer that God is always in the delays. And just those couple of hours on the side of the road oh, when we were there worshiping the Lord and singing I want you to know that God spared us from a terrible, terrible accident. And perhaps COVID-19 has been a delay for you. Perhaps some of your plans have been put on the shelf. Perhaps some of the things that you were hoping to do and planning to do have just all been put on the back burner or taken off the drawing board completely. I want this song to bring you some comfort today. It's called Walking Hand in Hand with Jesus. Amen. Praise Amen. God. 
I haven't sung this song in quite a while. I love this song. And I used to play it on the piano, and actually, oh. this is James Cheeseman. James Cheeseman is one of our deacons in our <laughs> church, and uh, he was a young man in our youth group when we were youth pastors, yeah. and this was one of his favorite songs. Oh. And so, James Cheeseman, for all your hard work, <laughs> all your blessings, the great blessing that you and your family yes. are to our lives and to our church. This one goes out to you. <laughs> Amen. So throw a little something extra in the offering plate this morning. <laughs> Me and Jesus, we were walking down life's dusty road. And he told me, child, I love you. And I'll never let you go. And I told him, my sweet Jesus, I want to serve you the best that I can. And he told me, son, just walk with your hand in my hand. 50 cents James is putting in. <laughs> walk in hand, in hand. With Jesus, it's the only way to live everything that I need. He's promised to supply. Walk in hand, in hand with Jesus, headed to my home on high where there'll be no tears of sorrow and where we'll never die now sometimes this old life brings its heartaches and its tears but Jesus, he's the kind of friend When he's around, there's just no fear Walk in hand, in hand with Jesus He'll be right there every time If I got a million dollars or if I'm down to my last dime Walk in hand, in hand with Jesus It's the only way to live Everything that I need He's promised to supply In hand, in hand with Jesus Headed to my home on high Where there'll be no tears of sorrow Where there'll be no sad tomorrows Where there'll be no pain or sorrow and where we'll never die. Amen. Praise God. Praise Don't God. Amen. Amen. Walking God. hand in hand with Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. Let's turn to the word of the Lord this morning. We're going to turn your attention to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 25. The book of Genesis chapter 25. First book in the entire Bible. That's right. That's right. And we're going to begin reading with verse 17. We're going to begin reading with verse 17. I'm sorry. Genesis 26. All right. Genesis, Genesis 26. 26. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I... Uh, Got my thing here a little goofed up. <laughs> That's all right. 
Genesis 26. God is in the delays, right? God is in the delays. Praise God. We're going to begin reading with verse 17. And we're going to read all the way down to verse 25. Because I need you to get this foundational uh, scripture in your spirit this morning. All right. About what we're going to be teaching on for at least the next two weeks. At least the next two weeks. This is going to be our theme. Leave a well in your valley. Leave a well in your valley. Here we go. Genesis chapter 26, beginning with verse 17. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley. Remember that word? In the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac moved from here to there, went to a valley called Gerar, and he settled there. Isaac reopened the wells. Check that out. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father. Mm -hmm. Think about that this morning. His father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Essek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So Isaac named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well. This is the third well. Check this out. And no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From there he went to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Here's our final verse. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. We want to preach to you this morning on this subject. Leave a well in your valley. Leave a well in your valley. Amen. Stretch forth your hand toward the screen this morning, and let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we release the word of the Lord, yes. I sense the spirit of the prophet on Thank me today, you, God. And as Thank we you, preach Lord. this prophetic message, may people's lives never be the same amen. after today. Amen. In the name of the Lord, amen. You, Lord. That's a good place to type amen. amen. Leave a well in your valley. I want to read to you the words of a song written by a man named Gordon Jensen. And the name of that song is Leave a Well in Your Valley. Here's what it says. To the valley you've been through, those around you must go too. Down the rocky path you travel, they will go. If to those facing your same trial, you'll lend the secret of your smile. You will help them more than you will ever know. The second verse, blessed is the man who has learned to understand. He's to be the hand of God to those in need. Then all the tears that you have shared, shed, I'm sorry, then all the tears that you have shed with God's help become instead a precious balm for those hearts that bled. And then the chorus says, leave a well in the valley, your dark and lonesome valley, for others have to walk that valley too. And what a blessing when they find the well of joy you've left behind. 
So leave a well in the valley you go through. Amen. I want to just sing that chorus for you this morning so it can just saturate your soul. This is the way it goes. Leave a well in the valley, your dark and lone some valley, for others have to walk that valley too. And what a blessing when they find the well of joy you've left behind. So leave a well in the valley you go through. Leave a well in the valley your dark and lone some valley for others have to walk that valley too and what a blessing when they find the well of joy you've left behind so leave a well in the valley you go through praise amen. god praise god amen so leave a well in the valley you go through in the scriptures Valleys and wells are very significant. Mm. Without the valleys, people would not mature spiritually. They would not mature emotionally. Right. Valleys are important in the spiritual realm as they are in the natural realm. Yes. And if you've lived walking with the Lord for any period of time, you probably more than likely have experienced a valley time in your life. Yes. In the Christian walk, there's a desert walk. There's a time where you feel completely deserted. You feel like there's nothing but barren land around you. There will be mountaintop experience where you're clicking on all cylinders. You're bringing your A game. All the bills are paid. <laughs> Nobody's acting like a fool in your family. Your relationships <laughs> are great. Your kids are doing great. Those are the mountaintop experience. And then there are these valley times. Mm -hmm. They seem dark. They seem lonesome. They seem like you're going to die in the midst of that valley. I want to remind you of the words of David. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will never fear evil. Why? Because you, God, are with me. Yes. Your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me and they protect me. Goodness and mercy are following close behind. So there are times that when believers find themselves in these valley experiences. Yeah. They are times when you want to just lay down and die. Yeah. There are times when you think there's no end to this. I'm here to tell you today. In fact, I want you to put your hand on your chest this morning, and I want you to say this with Pastor G and PJ. I'm in the valley right now. I'm, I'm in, in the, the valley, valley right, right now. now, but I'm about to come out. But, but I'm, I'm about, about to, to come, come out. out. Just Declare that over your life Amen. this morning. I may be in a valley right now, but God is about to bring me out. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Valleys are significant in the scripture. Mm. Many battles were fought in valleys. David, when he faced off with Goliath, it was in a valley. There were other times throughout the scriptures that God caused his people to go into the valley and have great battles. And God yes. brought great victories to yes. the people of God in those valleys. Amen. And then wells are significantly important in the scriptures. You see, the scriptures are written from an Eastern perspective. It's tough for us in the Western hemisphere sometimes to wrap our minds around what the scriptures are teaching because much of the scriptures, the majority of the scriptures are written from an Eastern perspective. Right. And many of the scriptures are birthed out of stories and come out of documented, historical, evidenced um, events that God did with his people. And it happened out in the deserts. It happened yes. up on mountaintops yes. and they happened 
in the valleys. Yes. And so wells were very, very important in scripture because when you were in a desert <laughs> land, you needed water oh, for yourself, yes. for your animals, for the vegetation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Water was something so important. It was something so important. And so throughout scriptures, you will read about the patriarchs of the faith yep. digging wells, digging wells. And they knew that under the surface of the earth, that hard crusted earth, there were mm -hmm. artesian wells. There yes. were waterways that God had created and God had put them there. And through the convectionary process of the earth, minerals were being moved and stones were being moved and waterways were being created. And right. so it was very important for the patriarchs on behalf of their um, um present legacy and the future posterity that would come that they would dig these wells and get down to that fresh water so yes. they could live so their animals could live and so yes. the vegetation could live and yes. so wells and valleys very very significant in scripture yes and so they are very significant today in our lives and perhaps this mm -hmm. covid 19 pandemic situation perhaps the sheltering mm -hmm. in place this uh preserving that god has allowed his people to go into hiding or go into isolation perhaps right. it has felt like a valley experience for you yeah. perhaps you have said my god i don't know how much more i can take mm -hmm. and perhaps you're there right now well, I've got good news for you. All across America, America is beginning to reopen. Yes. Uh, there is pushback from American citizens that are saying, you know what? We've got a constitution that protects our rights, our liberties, our pursuit of happiness. We have God-given unalienable rights that have been given to us. So we're watching a pushback from the American mm -hmm. people and all of the world's eyes are in America because America is a different country. It's unlike any other country. And True. PJ and I and our family and our teams have traveled in many different areas of the world. And I got to tell you, Americans watching today, don't take those liberties for granted. People bled and they shed tears and they shed blood so that we could be afforded freedom and liberty, but it is not free. It has come yes. at a price. So we're watching pushback against yes. governors. We're watching pushback right now. And it's a balancing act and there's much divisiveness mm -hmm. in our nation right now. Is, should I wear a mask? Oh, you're ridiculous right. if you wear a mask. You're ridiculous if you don't wear a mask. Please, brothers and sisters, don't get pulled into that divide. Right now is the greatest hour of the church. And this is not an American dilemma. It's a global oh, yeah. dilemma. Therefore, it's not an American opportunity. And let me burst some of your bubbles this morning. God is not an American. God <laughs> is not a Republican. God is not a Democrat. God is God. God is He's God. the judge of the whole earth. Yes. He is the Prince of Peace. Don't try to bring down God to fit your political agenda or your political um, ideology. Yes. God is God. Seek him like never yes. before. And yes. as America and the rest of the world is beginning to find our ways in this new economy, in these new norms, seek God for yourself. Listen to God and listen to what he is saying to you today. Yes. That's a good place to say amen. 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 So, Thank you, Lord. Perhaps this COVID-19 has just thrown a wrench in your plans in your life. Mm -hmm. And you feel like, oh my God, this is the worst valley I've ever been through. We've got a word for you today. So Genesis 26 tells us some of the stories that Isaac, who was the second patriarch, Abraham was the original patriarch. Yes. He was an idol worshiper that God brought to the knowledge of Jehovah. God gave Abraham a vision. He said, I want you to look in the stars. You don't have any children right now, but I want you to try to count the stars. God, I can't count the stars. They're innumerable. That's right. So will your seed be 
it will not be able to be counted. Right. Count the sands of the sea along the Mediterranean, Abraham. God, I can't do that. You're right, you can't do that. I know the number of those grains, but no man does, Abraham. But right. as innumerable as the grains of the sand are, so will your seed be. Yeah. And then Isaac came along. And before Isaac came along, Abraham, as he traveled through the land, he had his servants dig these wells. Why? Because wells are so important. You need water for your life. You need water for your sustenance yes. and for the sustenance of the earth. And right. Abraham had been given a promise that there was a son. And out of Abraham's loins would come the nations of yes. the earth. So he dug wells, not just for himself, but for everybody that would be coming after him. Everybody. And then Abraham went off the scene, and now we have Isaac in Genesis 26. And the Bible says Isaac moved from here to there, and he settled in a valley. He settled in a valley. In other words, he made his home in that valley. Yeah. And the Bible says, if you read in Genesis 26, that, that there Isaac began to plant crops and there he began to raise cattle, and his wealth was unmatched, unmatched. in that entire area of yes. Gerar. And the people were jealous of him. Hear this. People that did not believe in Jehovah, mm -hmm. people that were worshiping other gods, people that were completely agnostic, they were atheistic, they didn't believe in God. When they saw the blessings of God on Isaac in the valley, mm -hmm. they said, Oh, man, look at what that guy has. And they begin to be jealous of him. Here's why PJ and I tell you this is the greatest hour of the church. Because I believe in the midst of your valley, God is going to make you so prosperous. Yeah. He's going to make you so healthy. He's going to make your barns burst forth with Amen. plenty. And your presses shall burst forth with new wine. Yeah. He's going to give you double for your trouble. You're in the valley right now and God wants you to prosper. He wants his church to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, the city set high on the hill, Amen. a church that is not broken, busted, and disgusted, right. a church that's not depressed, his church that's not fearful, worrisome, right. anxious, or doubtful, yes. but a church that is alive. alive. Yes, alive yes. in the valley. Amen. Praise God. That's Praise what we God. believe for Praise you. God. So Abraham came, then Isaac came, and Isaac began to redig the wells that his father had dug. Yeah. You see, because the enemies, the Philistines, found those wells and they took great stones and they covered the mouth of those wells and they said, we're going to make this place a dry and arid space. Mm -hmm. But here came the second generation. Here came the second patriarch. Right. And he instructed, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost here Hallelujah. so strongly. Thank he you, had Lord. his servants find those wells, which took work. It took effort. Yes, they didn't right. just lay down in the valley and say, oh God, here we are, we're going to die. No, they put their hand to shovels yes. and picks. And they began to move rocks and they found yes. those wells so that they could prosper in the valley. And they dug one. They found one. And the Bible says that the people, the shepherds, the herders of Gerar came and they quarreled and they fought. Mm -hmm. So Isaac said, I'm going to name that one Essek mm -hmm. because we quarreled there over the water. And the enemy said, that's our water. And then he went and he dug another well. And somebody else came and quarreled with him over that water. And he said, I'm going to name this one Sinhat or something along mm -hmm. those lines because they quarreled over their waters. And then the Bible says they went to another area and there Isaac dug another well. And there, nobody quarreled with him. Mm -hmm. There, nobody could oppose him. The man of God, this second patriarch, dug down into the water and into the ground, and he found that water. And there was nobody greater than him. There was right. nobody wiser than him, nobody more powerful than him. Yes. 
And there he said, we're going to call this one Rehoboth because mm -hmm. God has given us opportunity to be settled in and right. flourish in this land. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good place to amen. say amen. Thank you, Lord. So what can we draw from these valleys and from these wells? Number one, I got three points for you this morning. Number one, the valleys are necessary for spiritual growth and maturity. True. Number one, the valleys are necessary for spiritual growth yes. and maturity. Thank Number you, two, the valley is what you will make of it. The valley True. is what you make of it. Yes. And number three, leave a well in that valley. Yes. Leave a well in that valley. Number yes. one, the valleys are necessary. You see, if all you lived was on the mountaintop, you would never know the beauty that God brings out of trouble and struggle and loneliness and peril. It would all only be clicking on all cylinders and sunshine and daisies. And that's not the reality of life. The mountains are there and the valleys are there. Yes. And on the mountaintop is where the snow comes, where the rain comes, where the movement of water and air and molecular um, disruption and frustration and it moves mm -hmm. all that down into the valley and when that water that moisture comes down there it makes the valley a beautiful plentiful abundant abode and yes. so the valleys are necessary because in the valleys is where you got to put your hand to a shovel and to a pick and say, where are those wells that the former generation left for us? Because you see, we're not the first ones to experience the valley. There were other ones that came before us and yes. they came through those valleys and they almost died there, but they looked to the Lord. Remember what David said. He said, I will lift my eyes. Yeah unto the hills from where my help comes from. Yeah. My help comes from the Lord. Lord, which made heaven and earth. You see, David spent a lot of time in the valley. Yes, he did. So the valleys are necessary to dig out wells, to dig out wells. They're necessary to do some work, put forth some effort, put down some roots mm -hmm. because it's not just for you, but there are others that are coming after you. You see, my grandparents went before me. Mm -hmm. They taught us how to pray, how to fast, how to touch God. And then there came that second layer of second generation of patriarchs. Those were my mom and dad, Pastor Maureen Sr. and Susie Maureen. And then now they've passed off the scene. And then now there's G and PJ. And we are now in the valley. And we've got yes. to dig down deep yes. because our children and grandchildren are coming after us. Yes. So God is releasing this word. Amen. The valleys are important for your maturity. Yes. Number two, the valley is what you make of it. Yes, the yes. valley is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. God has allowed you to be in the valley. You can't just lay down and die. Hear me this morning. You must muster every bit of strength and anointing yes. and grace and prayer and yes. fasting and touching heaven. Yes. Because the valley is what you make of it. Yes. Some are going to just lay down and die in this COVID situation. They're going to lose all hope. They're going to lose all all connection with God, connection with the church body. PJ and I have watched it in our own congregation where people are just flying under the radar or they've completely disconnected. It doesn't uh -huh. matter how many text messages I sent, how many Facebook messages we have sent, how many phone calls we have met, sent, how many times we've met on Facebook Live. People have just laid down and they said, oh, it's hopeless. This isn't ever going to change. I'm giving up on God. I'm here to tell you this morning as a prophetic voice in your life, do not lay down and die. Amen. Dig in those valleys. Yes. Find those wells that have been left behind right. because it's not just about you, but there are children and grandchildren yes. Yes. and unbelievers and believers that are going to walk through that same Amen. lonesome time. The same and one. they need what you have yes. left behind for them. Praise God. Thank the you valley Lord. is what you make of it. Yes. You see, Isaac 
He flourished in the valley because he went to work when he was in the valley. He said, oh, he didn't just lay down and lick his wounds. Right. He didn't just lay down and just die. Oh, no, the Philistines didn't. have covered up all the wells. It was God was good to my parents, but he's not been good to me. No, no God no. is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. So the valley is what you make of it. You know what? PJ tells me, own it, G, own it. <laughs> if I got something that I'm struggling with, she says, own it, G. My hair, I mean, I'm telling you, I needed a bad haircut. And hair was just here and there. And PJ said, own it, G. So I did. Man, I pulled out the old Pentecostal Aquanet hairspray and I owned it. And then she's given me two great haircuts. You see, you got to own that valley where you're at. You got to own yeah. that bad situation where you're at. Yeah. You got to own that loneliness and everything right there because until you own it, you can't change it. But yeah. when you say, hey, this is what it is, That's and right, God yeah. has put yeah. everything inside of me mm -hmm. to turn this situation, yes. I'm not just going to lay around and blame it on the devil or blame it on COVID or blame mm -hmm. it on the economy. I'm going to muster the strength of God. You see, Paul said this, be strong in the Lord yes. and in his mighty yes. power. Yes. Oh, yes. my God. What a Amen. word. What a word. Number Amen. three, leave a well. Leave a well in that valley, in that dark and lonesome valley, mm. because others have to walk that valley too. Yeah. And what a blessing when they find the well of joy you've left behind. Yes. So leave a well in the valley you go through. Amen. PJ, PJ, I want you to look into that camera today and I want you to release some wisdom and guidance about leaving wells. Mm. You know, this whole message is so impactful and so important for us, not only for us, but like Pastor G said, Hallelujah. for those coming behind us, those watching us right now, they need to know, like the song said, that, that reason that we can smile when we're going through this valley. Hallelujah. And, you know, we need to look at our life as a whole, not just this season that we're in, not just this valley, but remember the rest of the our life and the goodness of God. Remember with gratitude everything the Lord has done for us, even our life today. And remember with gratitude the cost that Jesus Christ paid on the yes, cross for yes, our yes, salvation. Yes, yes. All of those things lift our spirits when we're in the in the valley. And those are things that we need to dig down, dig deep, down deep into our experience to draw that living water from. So I'm going to ask you to grab a, a pen and some paper. I'm going to give you some things to think about. I'm going to give you some homework today. Where are we? Oh, we're at home. Okay, ah, so I love homework. it. <laughs> All right, everybody, adults, teens, kids, paper, pen, here we go. Here we go. It's important that when we're in the valley to take a time of reflection. This is a very different thing than where we were three months ago. We're in this new situation where we need to really reflect and find out what are some things that are changing or new or that I can do differently to prepare when I go through this valley uh -huh, again uh -huh. or to help someone else who's coming to this valley. Because this isn't going to be the last valley no, that we're in. No. Life has its mountaintops and valleys. So list for me first for yourself five things and you don't have to put all five of them now we can think about this later but mm -hmm. things that you are grateful for things that you're the most grateful for make a note that you're gonna if you want to maybe you list one right now but i want you to come up with five things that you're most grateful for okay mm -hmm. next one five things that you value most right mm, now. Amen, because some amen. of these things have shifted in the past yes, few months. Yes, yes. Life isn't quite the same. Not and quite we, the same. We may be valuing something in a priority level differently now. Mm -hmm. What are some things of life that you're valuing most now? Come on now. Five Come of on them. now. Okay. Next one is going to take a little bit of honesty here. Come on now. A little bit of transparency yes, with ourselves. Yes, yes. Name three things that you're carrying that are excess burdens. Mm, so wow. as we're going through this valley now, what are some extra burdens that I am carrying mm. that I've I've put on myself mm -hmm, before? Mm -hmm. You know, we all have them. Maybe it's 
debt. Maybe it's um, too many vehicles or devices that we um, have spent our finances on. Maybe it's our health that we haven't been really paying attention to. Maybe it's um, you know disorder or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. things. What what are three things? Just be honest. You Come don't have now. to think of yeah. them all right now, but yeah. please do three, think of three. I, I have more than three. I'll I do tell you too, that. Fiji. I do too. <laughs> excess burdens that you're carrying. Because when we're going through the valley, we don't want to be carrying those excess burdens. You're preaching and, to me, preacher. And lastly, three things how I can better prepare myself for the next time I'm going mm. through this valley or how Powerful. I can help somebody else. So what could I do different? Maybe it's my time management. Maybe, again, it's my health. Maybe it's yeah. um, spending more time with my spirituality, with, mm -hmm. with prayer, with fasting, with uh, giving my <clears throat> tithe and offering. What are three things that I can do to, to help be better prepared Man, that's good next stuff. Time? Good stuff. Yeah, so five, most grateful for. Five things that you value the most, three excess burdens that you're carrying, and three, how can you better prepare for the future valleys? Amen. Because we want to put in your hands something that you can put right into practice immediately once we leave this service. We don't want to give you something that's just ambiguous or you know, just kind of yeah. so general that how you can't apply, apply it. it. Yeah. This is how you can apply it to your life. Let's recap. Number one, the valleys are necessary, necessary. for our growth and maturity. God both, good out of them. Amen. Both in the spiritual and the natural. Yep. Number two, the valley is what you make of it. It's in your control. It's not up to God. It's, it's up to you. Control. And number three, leave a well yes. in the valley dig, dig, you dig, go dig. through. Yes. We pray that this service has been a blessing to you. If you're already a member of Grace Christian Church or so Cal Connect, we want you to know how much we love you. Yes. We're in your corner. We're doing our best to connect with you. You got to do your best to remain connected to the body. If you're not already a member of Grace Christian Church, perhaps you're watching from another part of the state or another part of the country around the world, we invite you to become a, bot, a part of this part of the body of Christ. Yeah. We want uh, G and PJ to be your pastors if you need a pastor you can connect with us send us your your um information in a private message where we can connect with you you can be a part of this worldwide body called grace christian church and socal connect and we want to connect with you we want to help disciple you shepherd you walk through yes. your journey and pj would you let us know about the after party here. Yes, yeah, so when we say farewell for now on Facebook Live, we'll be going over to Zoom and we'll have our Zoom meeting, which you are welcome to. And it's where it's just going to check in with everybody and say hi, maybe see your face if you want to share your video yeah. again, and, um, and pray. And I'll give you that number. It's the same number every week. Every mm -hmm. week, same number. So 605 876 482. So simple. <laughs> 605-876-482. And you are all welcome to yes. join with us. That's 605-876-482. PJ, would you pray and dismiss this congregation today? Lord, we thank you for this beautiful time together today. Hallelujah. We thank you for the word that you have brought forth yes, to Lord. Pastor G today. We thank you that that word is going deep into our hearts and bringing forth, you, forth good fruit in our lives. And we bless your people today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. Remember, <coughs> this week, watch the Grace Christian Church page. The first eight to show up will be allowed at that service. The rest of you can come in your cars. You can watch by your phone. And then as things are opening mm -hmm. up, we will be unfolding this plan. And so we'll, we'll handle it this way as far as Facebook events. Some of you are kind of familiar with them. So only mark going if you're actually going to bring your yes. chair to the park. If you're planning to watch on live or if you're planning to watch from your car, just check interested. But only check going if you're planning to actually bring your chair to the park. That That's right. Good. Amen. Yeah. We love you. God bless you. Let's love head over you. to Zoom for our after party. Mwah.